Hey everyone, what's up? It's the Pro here, and uh, in this episode I'm going to be, like, going over the basics. Um, I've made, like, alright, I've, I've made tutorials, um, sorry, I was reading a message there. I've made tutorials in the past, but a lot of people seem to be still confused, kind of. So I'm going to be remaking those exact tutorials. Um, if you want to save yourself a lot of time and patience, like, what? Wait, that didn't make any sense. Alright. <laughs> if you want to save yourself some time, uh, I do recommend going and watching Season 2. Uh, just go to my channel, click the little magnifying glass, you'll find it on the page, and search for SE02. Anyways, without any further ado, let's go ahead and uh, get started. So, as you guys already know, you know, here's, um, this is what you guys see. When you first open RPG Maker, you'll see this for your first time. Uh, you can create a new project, let's name it Donkey. Or, you know, you can use File Open if you already have a project, and open up your, your project from there. Oops. Alright, so anyways, that's how you make a new project, and that's how you load a project. You can save your project here, or you can press Control S. Um, compressing the game data. This is how you would pretty much export your game to, um, like, so other people could play it. Now, if you want to make it to where everybody who can play it who doesn't have RPG Maker, like, uh, if you want to, like, massively produce this, then you would check Include RTP Data. RTP stands for Runtime Package, and it's all it's what consists of all the graphics, uh, it's that, that kind of English doubt that, but whatever. <laughs> It's the graphics, audio, everything that you see uh, during the editor, by the defaults, are the RTP. Um, this is really this is really necessary if you um, if you're going to be publishing this, you know, to everybody. Uh, create encrypted archive. This is if you want to make sure nobody can edit your game. There are uh, there are tools and software out there that will allow people to uh, decrypt it though. So, anyways, let's uh, get, let's go on here. In the edits, you have, you know, you can undo, cut, copy, paste, delete, all that cool stuff. So if you, like, have a selection here, um, or it's not for selections, it's for events, which I'll go over that shortly. The map mode. You have map, which is this. You have events, which is, which is this right here. And you have region, which is this right here. Regions are, like, basically they're used during scripting. They're also used for um, enemy encounters. So, if you want certain enemies to only appear um, on this area, then you would mark a number. And uh, don't worry, I will explain what the map properties are in the future. But um, basically, your troops are over here, and that's how you would set, you would select your region. We're gonna be going over this way in the future. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and cancel out of that. So yeah, that's how you would set little regions for uh, different encounters. Alright, so now I'm on the event layer. I'm, I usually tend to stay here a lot. It's just, like, it's so much simpler to just... I don't know, it's just like a natural thing. I'm just used to sitting at the event layer. So, um, when you're on the map mode, by clicking here, you have draw modes. You have a pencil, which can draw like that. And you have the rectangle, which... Well, it's like a square of stuff, as you can see. Um, there. You also have the ellipse... Ellipse, whatever, I think it's pronounced ellipse. I think it is. And uh, that draws a circle. And you have the flood fill, which completely paints over uh, related tiles. Yeah, and creates it automatically. It just replaces tiles. Yeah, that's what it was before. The shadow pen. This is used to create little shadows across the areas. The shadows are very blocky, yes. This is mostly used... Uh, during walls, and it's automatically created for houses, which you can use a shadow pen to, den to then delete the shadows away from the house if you don't want them there. Or you can simply turn them to the other side. It's up to you. Alright. The, uh, the scaling. If you're making a large map and you want to kind of be able to edit a lot, you can change the scaling like so. And, yep, and the tools. Here we have the database. The database is what controls your actors, class, skills, all of the games, the main running of the game, like, um, all the stuff. It controls all, all the data of the game, hence it being called database. I'll, go, I'll be going over that in another episode. <laughs> probably multiple episodes. Who knows? Um, okay, the resource manager. It'll probably be one episode. I can probably squeeze it in. The resource manager is where you would go to import or export 
uh, all the graphics, audio, uh, whatever you want, you know, to export or import. You got. You can even do movies. Movies, I believe, have to be in OGV format. Yes, movie files are in OGV format. You can convert your video file to an OGV using some kind of random video converter. Okay. Um, script editor. This is where you can change the scripting of your game. How everything works, how everything looks, like your menus, you can add different things, you can make custom battle systems. Uh, the, the, the programming language that is used is called RGSS. This is the third version of RGSS, also known as RGSS3. RPG Maker VX was RGSS2, and RPG Maker XP was the original RGSS. RGSS stands for Ruby Game Scripting System, it, which really, really, really uses a lot of Ruby. Um, it is, it, essentially it is Ruby, but it's been slightly modified, I believe. So, um, but if you know Ruby programming, you should be able to pick this up pretty quick. But, you know, don't go you know, thinking that all of your Ruby commands that you learn might work. Uh, you know, you're going to have to learn some new things, I believe. But, yeah, you can you can still do all your print stuff. And uh, if you are into programming, you can... Uh, how do we open... Oh, yeah. If you are into programming, you can click Show Console. And whenever you start the game, you uh, will be able to see the console. Okay. Oh, here it is. Oops. <laughs> Error. Anyways, uh, yeah, you'll be able to see the console by uh, clicking Show Console. The other tool we have is the sound test. It allows you to test all your audio. And um, I just glitched out there, but don't worry about that. That's because, yeah, I'm oh, sorry. But um, so here's where you can test all of your audio, all that cool stuff. And the character generator. This is pretty cool because it allows you to create ra uh, characters by random, or you can select different things. You know? So that's a pretty cool feature. Uh, you can select male or female. And, um, so that's the character generator. And once... I forgot to explain something. You can output the face of the character, and it'll automatically go to your faces folder. You can also output the character, which will go to your characters folder. So, that's how you kind of create characters. But you also have a default amount of characters as well. Uh, if you go to game, you can launch in full screen. You can play test. Or you can show the console, or you can open the game folder, which is right here. In the game folder, you will see an executable of your game and the game's project. After you've exported your game using the uh, file compressed game data, uh, this is what they'll see. This is what they're all going to be seeing. It's right here. Uh, without the game project. It'll most likely be either encrypted, or you can delete the project file. It's up to you. And, uh, once you launch the game, it's the exact same game. Okay, so uh, that kind of bugged out. I alt tab, and it apparently, yeah. <laughs> All right, now the uh, help. You can do the contents, and basically, if you have any programming questions, you can go here. So if you want to say, like, uh, if you're looking for a graphics command, you can do. You can, it'll show you stuff like bitmap. Uh, you can scroll down a little bit more to graphics. You can see, it just you can find a lot of uh, scripting help here in the uh, RPG Maker VX Ace help file thing. All right, so anyways, that I guess that explains the basics. Um, like all of this up here, you can also kind of select it all here, or you can use the hotkeys by hovering over. You can see what it does, or you can just click here and you can see the uh, hotkeys right there. So if you want to use hotkeys, you can. If you want to use the menu up here, you can. You want to use these little buttons, you can. I usually use the buttons. Um, yeah, again, you can do what you want. Um, yeah, so I thank you guys so very much for watching. Uh, let me know in the comments what you guys think of this episode. Did it help you? Uh, did I go too fast or whatever? Anything like that. You know, just, uh, let me guys... Like, let me guys... What? Let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you guys later. Thank you all so much for watching.